Hail the tribe of the internet. I am Mortis and this is Hardcore Hollow. And today we are going to go a ghost busting to Oscar's play. Sunshine filters in through the dusty windows of the estate as the dull aches of last night's activities throb in and out of focus. You manage to survive a second night in the town of Scarlet Hollow. As you pull yourself out of bed, you can feel the soot and grime of the showman still stuck to your skin. <gasps> yeah, we should take a shower, right? Like, we haven't, we haven't took a shower in the first playthrough, so I think we should take one now. You step into the guest bathroom and into the shower. Also, this is our shower. Very, um, well, you know, clean and pretty and all that. The water is hot and, surprisingly enough, clean. At least the water is clean. A steam fills your lungs and the suit washes down the drain. You... Amish the girl. Every minute you fi every minute feels like another thread holding this town together starts to unravel. Thoughts of doom consume me. Or think about Rosa's shattered leg, the image of a foot barely still attached to her body. Think about Duke and the image of him lying there slumped against the tree with half his head blown off. Why are all of these options so dark? Can we can can we not think about something happy? Like I don't want to start my day like this. Scrub feverishly, trying to scrape the memories from your skin, if uh, as if they are a part of the dirt that coats you. Uh -huh. Think about Sibyl's warning: the worst is yet to come. Think about Wayne and wonder how many times he watched you watched you unseen, or. Think about someone special, or think about finally being out of this house and sleep in your own bed. No, no, we're going to think about someone special. You think about someone special specifically, you think about Stella, your intrepid cryptid hunting companion, and everything the two of you have been through since you got to town. Kanika, the resident goat and one of the most level-headed and fashionable people in town. We are gonna get into her room. I guarantee you, we are gonna get in there. A ver uh, Avery and their calming presence standing in contrast with the coming storm. Oscar, the shy and handsome town, li town librarian stuck in a haunted house. Uh, Reese, Stella's mysterious and reclusive friend. Or Wayne and wonder how many times he's watched you unsee. <laughs> The change of perspective here, suddenly it's hot that, uh, that, you know, he's talking on us, what the hell? No, 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 we are Team Reese and you know that, we are going to think about Reese. You think about Reese, tell us mysterious and reclusive friend, you will finally get to meet him today. Can he possibly live up to the hype? Sure, he will. You're done here, you turn off the faucet and dry yourself off. Time to start your day. Oh, check on the possums. Yes. Hi, Dustin. Hi, Dustin, mom. There are two of them now. Yeah. You know what it means? It means that uh, the goat is in the, uh, the the greenhouse in the garden. Wave at them. Sure. You wave down the dog possums. They look up at you. Hi, babies. No, we don't want to say please get out, pet them or close the dresser. They don't they don't like being pet even even if you can talk to them. So we won't scare them off. I like both of you. Sweethearts. Bye bye. You've had enough of the growing family of opossums that live in your dresser at least for the time being. Uh, no, there's nothing outside the window that worth mentioning worth mentioning. Uh, but we are going to check on the doll. Every time you see that doll, your heart skips a bit. It hasn't moved, right? No, it hasn't. We need key knife for that to know that it hasn't moved. Not yet. That's enough of this closet. You turn back to the guest room. Uh, message your group chat uh, with Stella and Kanika. You pull out your phone and open up your group chat with Stella and Kanika. 
Uh, morning, how are you guys loading up? Last night was terrible, was the game plan? I actually bonded with Tabi last night. And I don't know if we can call that bonding though, but sure we told. Can't wait to ghost pass tonight. I get to meet Reese today, that's true, that's true, we get to meet that, uh, meet him. Or send a photo of a painted man, sure. <laughs> Particularly this pain old man. <laughs> you said the foot of a pain old man, yes. Yes, thank you. Thank you. It will probably be a bit before you get a response. And uh, now we're. Oh, should we text Kanika? We want to get into her room. We should text her. You pull out your phone to text Kanika. How are you holding up? Wanna hang out before Reese goes out? Oh, wanna hang out? How are things with my center foot of an exhausted Ben Affleck? <laughs> you know, yes, sure, we are only going to communicate in photos. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, game. It will probably be a bit before you get a response, alright? Uh, head downstairs. You've done everything you wanted to up here. It's time to start your day. You enter the kitchen to find your cousin in the midst of devouring a pinto banana chocolate chunk. She isn't alone. Hi, Jenny! Proofru leers at you from her usual spot on the counter as a red-headed woman busies herself trying to tidy as best she can. Tabitha's gaze swivels from the woman to you, her glare intensifying. Uh, hello, or hi, I'm Mortis. No, no. Uh, are we having ice cream for breakfast? Any updates on Rosa? Hey Tabby, how's it going? Or hey, hey Akas, how's it hanging? <gasps> We're just staring in silence. <gasps> well, you know, none of these are rude enough, so I think we will just have to be awkward. <laughs> Stare. You stare in silence at the two women in the kitchen. Good, you're up. I am. Tabitha takes one last spoonful of ice cream, then discards the empty container, turning to you with her trademark scowl. Let's get going, I've got an errand to run in town, and every time I left you here alone, something terrible wound up happening, so you're coming with me. Oh, I can't lie! I'll be out during a couple of minutes, got to wrap up my morning routine. Cousin, morning time? No, no. Alright, let's go, I haven't had breakfast, you can't just take away my freedom like that. I don't need a babysitter. Hey. Well, either you can take away my freedom like that, or we should just lie. And if you ask me, lying is always the worst option you can choose, so we are going to lie. I'll be out there in a couple of minutes, I feel like uh, shit from last night and I still have to wrap up my morning routine. Also, what kind of morning routine you could, could you possibly build up in like two days? What are you talking about? Given your track record, if I let you out of my sight, you would probably just disappear into the wilderness, only to return in the middle of the night after burning <laughs> Oh, Thank you, Tabby. Thank you. If I'm lucky, you will give me a call at some point between dousing the building in kerosene and <laughs> You know me so well, Tabby. You know me so well. Would you, would you like to come with me and burn the town down, please? I, that, I would love that. That would be great cousin bonding, by the way. Jenny, look up when you leave, please, and don't go rearranging anything. I will know. As you're ready to leave, Jenny approaches from the far side of the kitchen. Tabby remains between the two of you, impatiently tapping her food. Oh, Mortis, before you go, I heard about what happened last night. I'm so sorry you got caught up in that. I'll be praying for Oscar and poor little Rosa. They are such sweethearts. Couldn't have happened to nicer people. Amazing, yeah. Last night was an unavoidable tragedy, but I'm afraid there is more to come. Or, thanks, last night was a lot. Uh, I would love to chat, but I'd hate to interrupt your work. I'm in town for another few days, though, if you've got time. That'd be so mean. Sorry. Sorry, Tabby, it's so mean to you. <gasps> That's great. That's golden. Have you seen any weird creatures, Wayne? Have you seen anyone crawling around this state? It's been nice meeting you. Tabby's foot tapping, driving me insane. I should go. No, 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 no. Sorry, Tabby, it's so mean to you. I'm standing right here. That's the whole point. 
oh, you don't have to apologize for her. I knew what I was getting into when I took that job. Though she really, she's really pretty funny once you get to know her. The nastiness is mostly for show. I used to be her babysitter, so I've known her since she was just an awkward kid. And once you know someone like that, it's hard to be intimidated by them. I'm going to stop the two of you right there. Okay, wait, but wait a minute. How old? How old is Janie? Because I know that that we, we like Tabby, um, the main character and the others, like Kanika Reese, uh, we are about 20 something, right? So if Janie was Tabby's babysitter, she has to be around 40 maybe, but she don't have any gray hairs, you know, white streaks anywhere. And if I remember correctly, co co correctly all uh, the parents, uh, like Oscar and Dr. Kelly, they have gray streaks in their hair. So how old is she? Because she lo don't look like as, as if she's in her 40s, I guess. Mortis, I'm busy and not in the mood to watch you and Jenny gossip about me. Why though? It's not it's not gossip. Gossip happens behind your back. We are just talking. It's it's just a morning chit chat. We are leaving. Alrighty then, be safe out there, you two. Toby practically drags you from the estate, one hand clasped firmly around your arm. She continues to drag you all the way into her car and from there into town. The ride to town is uneventful. Your cousin unsurprisingly more focused on the road than on making conversation. All right, we're just popping into the general store for a few minutes. Uh, what are we doing at the general store? Picking up tea from Sibyl. Oh, street smart teas. Oh, I gotcha, picking up tea. Yeah, I'm picking up tea. Why are you just saying it all weird? It's okay, Toby, you can tell me if Sybil is your dealer or tea slang for drugs here, yeah? I get what you're putting down. <gasps> Just wink at her! Yes, wink at her! Did you think I was taking you with me to buy drugs? No, no, I know it. I'm picking up normality for drinking. Wink, sure you are! <laughs> You wink at your cousin, her face tightens into an all too familiar scowl. Oh, the, oh and you are just... <laughs> you just want to change topic like that. No, we're not doing that. No, we're not, we are not going to let this go. Yeah, Tabi turns at the door to the general store, bursts open. A flustered Kanika exits, shouting behind her. Fine, okay, keep coddling him. Keep letting him get away with stuff you never would have uh, let me so much as think about. I'm sick of carrying this family. Kanika storms off, the door slowly drifting shut behind her. Ugh, other people and their drama. If more people kept things to themselves, they would be a lot happier. Keen eye, out of curiosity, would you call yourself happy? Or what are you burying? I'm surprised to see her let loose like that. I'm glad she's finally letting loose. Maybe her family will stop taking advantage of her and the usual. No, no, no. Okay. Which one? Which one? Which one is the is the worst option? What are you burying? Or out of curiosity, would you call yourself happy? I feel like this one is, is somehow more offensive. Out of curiosity, would you call yourself happy? Tabitha pulls back, surprised by your question. What did I just say? Yeah, I'm happy, whatever. We are burning daylight. Come on already. The buzz of the general store chime as you cross the threshold. The smells of old wood and steamy herbality flood your senses, making you feel instantly at home. Good morning, you two. Hope you're doing well after last night's activities. Morning. Is the new blend ready? Of course. 
What is if you would like to keep my company? Tabitha and I will just be a minute. I can't believe you tried to tell me you weren't here to buy drugs. <laughs> I. Oh, she most certainly is. Didn't you know that there is no better place in Scarlet Hollow to stock up on the dummies lettuce than my little old tea shop? I knew it. I knew it. A drug selling witch, that's what you are. What? I'm not some kind of stoner. Uh, you know what? It doesn't matter. Think what you will. I'm just pulling your leg, dear. With the emotions for Tabitha to follow, and they both disappear into the tea room, closing the door behind them with a tinkling of bells. Also, if you manage to get uh, closer with uh, Tabby, like you, you are, uh, you have a good relationship with her, then then she is going to uh, take this joke more lightly. I wouldn't say she enjoys it, but you know, she she gets it. Now, Street Smart and Kina, I find a good spot to listen in and actually we are going to find out a lot, well, not find out a lot, but hear a lot more of the conversation. You find a subtle spot near the door and listen in. I know it took a little longer than you would hope, but this was fairly short notice. In the future, please give me at least two months to gather what's needed. These plans are, aren't exactly easy to come by. So we are talking about something that Sibio needs at least two months together. But we are only came here two days ago. So, and Sibio said it, it was fairly short notice, but I don't think uh, Tabby ordered, let's say ordered, these, uh, these plants when we uh, arrived to the town. So she must have planned it beforehand, you know? Is there enough? Yeah, everything should go just fine. Make sure this is all it uh, eats for a few days, and I mean all. Put it somewhere that it can't get other food. We are talking about the goat that we are going to see in the next episode. That um, That's in the greenhouse. That's why uh, Dusty Mom is in our drawer now. And that's why the goat is in the greenhouse, because it had to be locked up. I'm not keeping it inside. Outside then, a shed, something enclosed, the greenhouse. And please call me if you get confused. Don't assume you know what you're doing. So, Debbie knows... I, I think... I think she knows what's going on. I mean, like, it's, it's a family thing, right? She has to know. But she she don't know what she's actually doing, considering the, the magical spirit stuff or aspect of this thing, right? And that's why Sibyl tells her to call her if uh, if she gets stuck or confused because she's a freaking witch. You only have one shot at this. Remember that. I assume probably at the funeral, because it's a scarlet thing. Pearl and ran me through it plenty of times. I know what I'm doing. Your listening session has halted at the tingling of bells. Uh, announce another patron. Yeah, hi, Bo. Oh, excuse me. Wait, you're Mortis, aren't you? Yes. My name is Bo. I'm Duke's boy. It's a pleasure to meet you. Miss Forsyth called me uh, on the phone and told me you saw what happened to my daddy. Yeah, I was there, you know. I could have saved him. I, I could have, that's true. I'm sorry for your loss. Yeah, it wasn't pretty sorry. Have you found his body yet? Folks don't seem to care that your daddy's dead, do they? <gasps> Is that too much? I think that's too much. We shouldn't. No, just moderately. I have to remember, only moderately mean, right? So, have you found his body yet? We're not, we not gonna say sorry. Miss Forsyth said that you or uh, Miss Richmond might know whereabouts to look and uh, that it uh, weren't smart to go looking if I didn't know the spot. Thank you for being there when it happened. Those woods can be awful scary, especially if uh, you're not used to them. And I know you did your best to help. Mama's pretty broken up about it. I'm trying to hold it together since I'm the man of the house now, but it ain't easy. Me and him was supposed to bring Big Betty to the state fair this week, but now he is gone and uh, as of this morning, so she is. So Big Betty, this is the pumpkin, 
and it disappeared today morning. And we assume that Julius stole it, but uh, but if it, it disappeared at the same time when the goat arrived, then maybe it has a connection. So I suppose if I'm not going to the fair, I may as well make myself useful and get out in the woods to look for what's left of my daddy. You was there, right? Could you tell me where to look so I can try and find him? Uh, we are not gonna ask about Big Betty because uh, we know the story, it's dangerous, I wouldn't go poking around. If you're scared of the woods, you shouldn't go up there. No, 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 that's too much. I don't think you want to see him like that. Your dad was killed by dishlings, they're the thing that have been stealing your chickens. Have you seen anything strange? I can't tell you, he died. Um, I don't think you want to see him like that though, it's really bad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I'm a farm boy, blood uh, don't bother me, none. I just want to find my daddy even if he's like one of them horror movie monsters. Well, he's still my daddy and he shouldn't be out in the woods where any animal can take a piece of him. Oh yeah, not you mention it. I think the ditchlings already put their little egg things into him, so you know, I, I'm not sure you should bring him home. Uh, I can't tell you where he is, it's not safe. Now we are going to tell him. Uh, he died on the northeast edge of town of the As Askina As Trail, I don't know. Thank you, Mortis. I appreciate you trying to help us out. I don't rest uh, easy knowing he's out there somewhere all by his uh, lonesome. And please tell me, Scarlet, I'm sorry about her mama. Toby and Sibyl are still in the tea room. Your phone buzzes. Oh my god, hey, I overslept. Still got to make myself breakfast. If you all want, you, you can swing by. Otherwise, meet at library and figure out a plan. I think I'm good, not really hungry. See you guys at library. And then it buzzes again, hey! Sliding into the DMs, are we? Yes! If you wanna hang out before the library thing, I'm part in the abandoned lot by the gas station, it's hard to miss. There is an abandoned parking lot? In a town this small? You have plenty of time before dinner at Reese's house. So now, I, uh, I realized one thing. So here is uh, here are all the things you can do before uh, the dinner. You can go after Kanika, swing by Stella, check in on Oscar, go to Avery, or wait for Tabby. But, but, and I had to I had to uh, look it up and watch the previous video again because I didn't know how I messed it up. So the thing is, if you have the street smart rate, and uh, when you talk to the miners. I even mentioned it in the previous video that uh, Isaac uh, lingers there for a bit and only leave, leaves afterwards. But when you have the street smart rate, you should be able to give him your phone number and then you can go meet him here. Uh, he would be on this list. So you could go and meet him, talk to him on one-on-one -on -one about Wayne and uh, you can get information about the... Uh, what is this? What the miners is doing? Uh, they're not protesting. What are they doing? You know the thing. It's strike. They are striking. Striking. Yeah. So the strike. Uh, but we didn't get the option for that, even though we have street smart. So I don't know why that happened or didn't happen mostly. And now I'm pretty afraid that I won't be able to show you something that I really, really wanted to show you in the next episode, in episode 4. But uh, hopefully, hopefully I will be able to. I don't know if something, if the devs changed something or it's just a bug or something like that. But, uh, but yeah, I wanted to meet Isaacs. I wanted to show you that, but we can't do that. So we are going to do the next best thing, go after Kanika, so we can get into her room. You follow the directions Kanika texted you and soon find yourself in a disused parking lot hidden behind the shuttered shop on Main Street. But there are cars here. Oh, and the broken fence. 
Oh, and Wayne! <laughs> hi, 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 Wayne! Hi, and there are no ditchlings here. Huh? Interesting. She's sitting alone in the back of her van, but she notices you lurking on the edge of the parking lot and waves her troubled expression brightening into a smile. Hey, you made it! Hop on in. Oh, Mrs. Diganki! There is something different about Tanika today. It's as if her spirit has dimmed some of the, the life drained from her soul. Her once sharp eyes now unfocused as they fall on you. Ooh! What's the happen? Also, <gasps> she has she has an axolotl plushie. Oh, how cute! And the bear and this cat. I don't remember the name. Most probably Luna, uh, a Sailor Moon cat. You know the black one. And I don't know these ones. I I, I don't know what that is. Also. Uh, the picture, I think it's, uh, well, it can be uh, Kanika, Stella and Breeze. Oh, and there is Gretchy. Oh, also, there you go. Take a look at her. How pretty she is. Sorry if this is a weird place to hang out. I'm uh, taking a mental health day. I kind of need some space from the store. Plus, I feel like ass and exhausted and a little out of it. Must have inhaled too much coal dust last night. <gasps> Fuller, yes, yes. Well, you look great. Are you trying to lay down the charm of me? Maybe it's working. Keep it up and see. Yes. Do you think you're contagious? No, no, no. Do you think that something in the minds uh, made you sick? What's going on with you and your folks? Sounds like you were having some kind of argument. How are you doing after last night? Then we're on Rosa. Hmm. Sounds like you were having some kind of argument. She sighed. Yeah, family stuff. Are you sure you want me to get into it? I don't want to dump all that drama on you. Of course. Now you told me I'm a friend for drama. I'm a fiend for drama. I am though. I love drama. And only if you're uh, only if you are comfortable sharing. We've only known each other for a couple of days. Are you sure you trust me like that? A second thought, nah, sounds like a lot. No, 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 only if you're comfortable sharing. I don't want to pressure you into saying something you would rather keep private. It would honestly be a relief to talk about it with someone. Thanks, Morty. You're welcome. Especially since you were there last night. So, you know how it felt to survive something like that unscathed? And to know not everyone was so lucky. But, but you, oh yes, 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 everyone survived, but you know, Rosa got hurt. So after I got home last night, I had to deal with my brother. He, oh yeah, your brother was at the mine as well, yeah. He really made me feel like I was the bad guy, especially once we got home. Like, what happened to Rosa was my fault. And mom didn't help. She never does, she always takes his side, saying he's young and allowed to make mistakes. Mistakes that I could never dream of getting away with. When we told her uh, what happened, she just said the same shit she always does about family and getting along and sent us to bed with tea. Always with the tea. Uh, her... F uh, what? What? Her favorite method uh, of conflict resolution. As if a little hot leaf uh, water ever really helped anybody. Hey, don't, don't, don't hurt tea. Tea is uh, great. What's the deal with her and the tea anyways? Is that it? That doesn't sound too bad. I'm sorry, that sucks. I don't know what you how you deal with these people. Your fault? That's rich. I mean, that's, um, that's a mean thing, right? Just not towards her. Right? It kind of boiled over this morning, though. She wound up blaming me for letting my sneak off into the mine, saying that if I'd been working like I was supposed to, he wouldn't have gotten into trouble. Like I'm supposed to be in charge of a sullen teenager every second of the day while working. You know what I you know what I just realized? Like Sibyl Sibyl looks more like their grandma. Right? Right? She she looks so much older than uh, than Oscar or let's see Dr. Kelly. Dr. Kelly, because Dr. Ha Kelly has Reese, right? Who is the same age as uh, as the team, as Kanika and us. So how old Sibyl really is? 
because I think she is way older. She may be, she even may be the same witch that Enoch uh, made the pact with many, many years ago. It, it's, it can be. I thought, up, up until now, I thought uh, uh, Sibyl must be a descendant of that uh, specific witch. But now I think they may be the same one. And it's not like I don't care. I'm always stressing out about that kid or the store or the million other little things I'm supposed to deal with. None of this should be on me. Uh, these are the best years of my life and I'm wasting them in this dying town, keeping the store afloat while my mom just messes around with her little herbs or whatever. I had made it out uh, I had made it out of here, damn it. I would gotten into grad school. I was good at it. I was going to graduate with honors and everything. But dad died and I came back for the funeral. Then I had to stick around just to help mom sort out a few things. First it was a month, then two. And now here I am, over a year later, and those few things became my life. I don't want to be this uh, person. If I could, I would just drive this one all the way to the coast, lie, da lie down on the beach and never come back. Always, oh, everyone always wants to go to the beach. Uh, Kanika wants to go to the beach, Tabitha wants to go to the beach. What about Stella and Reese? It sounds like a family is holding you back on purpose. It sounds like you already know what you want to do. What about Stella and Reese? Look, when it comes to Reese, I love the dude, but I haven't seen him in person in a long time. Hardly a reason to stay here. Stella, though... She was so happy when I came back. I mean, she was upset about their circumstances, but she'd miss me so much. And I just haven't made time for her. I know she understands why, but I'd feel awful just driving off and leaving things like this. It sounds like her family is holding back holding you back on purpose and I believe this is true like they are scared that if you leave you will never come back again and they will crumble without you not that specific reason and they have no right to hold you back like this yeah that's true and they probably would <laughs> they are your family don't you want to help them you should just leave right now you should just leave right now and you should uh, take me with you remain silent Ooh, should we is this flirty I don't think so uh, and they have no right to hold you back like this. You have no idea how much I needed to hear that. You're welcome. Like, can I go to your room, please? They really make me feel not sometimes just for wanting to live my own life. You want to make decisions about my future instead of the future of the family. Like, just because I was born into this family, I should be settled with all its responsibilities. I should just leave. You should. Maybe tomorrow. Stella made all those ghost hunting plans. I can't just skip out on her on her like that. But yeah, tomorrow. Definitely tomorrow. You know, you will never leave with this attitude, you know? You should come with me. Yes. Yes. God, and of course I feel like an asshole for talking about all of this now, the morning after a mind collapse. But I guess that's what pushed all of this uh, over the edge. Nothing like a major disaster to make you question the direction your life has taken, right? Flirt! Flirt! I wouldn't have met you if you hadn't stuck around. It's not all bad. You're right. I guess some good things can come from messed up situations. I'm serious, by the way. If I leave town tomorrow, when I leave town tomorrow, you should come with me. Uh, why leave tomorrow, though? If you're serious about getting out of here, it should be today. That's true. Do you think you're con- <laughs> No. Uh, okay, why tomorrow? I can't let Stella down like that. And before you say anything, this is different than the stuff with my family. I like Stella. You, what? you don't like your family or what are you trying to say here? Uh, how are you doing after last night, aside from the family stuff? Ha, <laughs> not great if you couldn't tell by now. At least I was able to get to sleep once the adrenaline wore off, even if I barely feel like I got any rest at all. Now, I've just got a raging headache. Ugh, I hope I'm not coming down with something. Before things got heated with my folks, mom gave me some more of this tea that's supposedly good for... I don't know, recovery, rejuvenation, the tea, always with the tea. It must have been 
caffeinated or something because it did not help me fall asleep. But it's kind of helping with the headache and at least it tastes good. What about you? Normal. <laughs> Just feeling l lucky. I feel guilty. I hate it here on one. <laughs> Should we? Should we? I hate it here. I want to leave. Soon, Mortis. Yeah, good, 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 good. <laughs> we can't be nice all the time. It's a mean rat. Any word on Rosa? Have you heard about Rosa? Not yet, but we can check in with Oscar soon. I'm really worried about her. That injury, really, huh, that injury looked serious. Maybe not life-threatening, but life-changing. The poor kid. I guess it's good that uh, we all got out of there. It probably could have gone a lot worse. But that's easy for me to say. I'm not the one in the hospital right now. It's just not fair. Okay. Are we still going uh, over to Reese's place today? All right. With everything going on, and I almost forgot. Yeah, I think that's around, that's around four. Here's hoping uh, he's still up for it. I'm dying to know what he's been up to in that little danger room of his. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't worried about the guy. Even with everything else that's been going on. He's so mysterious. I can't wait to meet this strange basement man. Yes. Any tips for making a good first impression? I hope he lives up to the hype. I don't trust his mom. His mom is. Uh, his mom's got it rough. Her whole life's probably been de derailed by this. Yes. Uh, he's so mysterious. I can't wait to meet him. I'm glad you found his Phantom of the Opera vibes intriguing. It's probably gonna be good for him to meet new people. Maybe it will get him to leave his underground uh, fortress every now and then. Any tips for making a good first impression? It's, it's important. I don't think you need to worry about making a good impression. If I know Reese, he will be way too worried about his own shit to even think to be offended by anything you say. Even if he is what his art, he would probably just think he deserved it. The poor guy, no. No, we are not going to be mean with him. I mean, uh, we should be, right? Just, just, just a bit, just a bit. We are not going to hurt his feelings too deeply. Don't do that, by the way. It would like uh, kicking a puppy. No, 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 no. We are not going to insult the art. No. Uh, what kind of art does he do? Really dark stuff is good, though. The guy is terrible at getting it out there. Not that I blame him, but it's the sort of stuff that will blow up the second he dies. Which hopefully won't be for a very long time. Sorry to get a little maca... maca... Ma How do you say this? Macabre? As I have hey, birds. I hope he lives up to the hype. I don't trust I don't trust his mom. I don't either. Things just don't add up with the two of them. Yeah. You remain silent. Uh, so ghost hunting. Uh, you and your cousin don't seem to get along very well. You're my cousin, sorry, you and my cousin. That's putting it lightly, but yeah, sometimes you don't get along with people. If you have to ask, I think she is a rip, rip, repugnant, selfish human being uh, to her core, and she's a big jerk too. Uh, did she do something to you? This seems personal. Besides her general bad attitude, no, she hasn't necessarily done anything to me. But her mom tried to buy the general store out from under my bed more times than he could count. She was an absolute snake of a woman, and the apple didn't fall far from the tree, judging by how Tabitha treats the minors. If I weren't here, I'm sure the store would already belong to the Scarlets. There is no way my mom or Miles would have the backbone to stand up to her. Just another way this town manages to keep its nasty little hooks in me. Well, Tabby is nice, you know. She's she's also a victim. Uh, wouldn't her buying the general store be, store be your ticket out of here? It's not that simple. My dad worked so hard to keep the store out of the Scarlet's hands. He knew as soon as Furlan got it, she would have a stra strange strangle stranglehold on housing, work, and supplies for the miners. Next thing you know, your town has lost a hundred years of progress and you're back in the era of company towns. If I left, it would be a slap in the face to everything my family has worked towards since my grandfather's time. It 
Sounds that I'm the only one in the family who cares about that anymore, but I guess that's life. Crazy to think I might just leave it all for the world chart? Oh yeah, birth. I <laughs> for a moment, I didn't know what, what it meant, but yeah, 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 the birth. <laughs> Uh, she and Stella seems like they're close, or at least like they used to be. Yeah, I don't know what Stella saw in her, but they got pretty close in high school. I was taking a lot of uh, online AP classes, so I wasn't around like I used to be. Maybe it's my fault they wound up hanging out so much. No, they were, you know, like close, close. It seemed like they were always together, but by the time I got back to town, they didn't seem to be talking anymore. Never really got the whole picture of what happened there, but thank god it meant I didn't have to see that woman all the time. Maybe Stella brought out a better side of her. I can't imagine them having friends. Yeah, maybe Stella brought out a better side of her, you know? Maybe, but whatever side she might have seen, I sure as hell haven't seen it. I can't, put, I can't put my finger on why, but I really like her. It's like I need her validation. No, no, no. I think she puts up a tough run, but she's softer than she seems. Yeah, I'm kind of ambivalent towards her. The is an asshole. Nah, I think she puts up a tough run, but she's softer than she seems. As if that changes anything. If a dog bites you because it's scared, it still bit you and you have every right to never trust it again. I mean, um, it doesn't matter if the dog is nice to other people or if it only beat you because it wanted to seem tough. She's never done anything to prove to me she's a good person inside. All she does is bark and snap at people. Yeah, but she never really hurt you either, so you know. I would be careful if I were you. Don't go sympathizing with someone like her. <laughs> So, ghost hunting tonight. It's why I'm still here, right? I can't wait to find whatever leaky pipe or slanted floor or bad insulation made it seem like the place was haunted. It's like a puzzle, you know? Yeah, you're right. I still think there is a rational explanation for all of this. Uh, what if ghosts are just red herring? What if all of this is actually because of aliens? If there's a ghost, I hope it's really scary. If I see a ghost tonight, I'm going to have a panic attack. <laughs> I'm just looking forward to helping Oscar feel safe in his house. How is that we don't get mean options here? How am I how am I supposed to be mean? We can just remain silent, but you know we want to get into her room, so uh, if I see a ghost I'm going to have a panic attack. I really do wonder what's going on in there though. Oscar always struck me as such a rational guy. It seems like it would take a lot to rile him up like this. Like, if he thinks there is a ghost in the house, there's got to be something really messed up with the place. Hopefully it's safe and there isn't a carbon monoxide leak or anything like that. Oscar is smart though, he wouldn't make that mistake. Yeah, share a quiet moment or quietly stand there. No, no, share a quiet moment. A soft breeze blows across the lot as you and Tanika share a quiet moment. Put your phones uh, buzz in unison, you reach for them at the same time. Almost forgot it, Mayor Jimmy Day! Good excuse to head over to the library, we should check in with Oscar. Now, the sad part about it is that we just ditched Tabby and we wasn't even able to tell her about the strike, but you know... Mm, she's gonna be a bit angry What? Uh, who wasn't angry with us, you know, like, eh. Meet you there in half an hour. Wow, I totally blanked on the Mayor Jimmy thing. It's almost like we just went through a traumatic event or something and I'm not on top of my schedule. Oh yeah, it's like that. But Stella is right, this gives us a chance to meet up with Oscar and Mayor Jimmy is awful cute. Uh, but is he as cute as me? Ah. I'd much rather say, uh, stay here with you. Ah. Finally, I'll be able to talk to an authority figure. Uh, why is meeting the mayor such a big event? Uh, do I have to? But is he as cute as me? He is a different kind of cute. I don't think you have to worry about him as potential competition if that's what you were getting at. Anyways, we will chill with Mayor Jimmy, go to Reed's for dinner, then do some ghost hunting tonight. Oh, sorry. 
<laughs> Thank God we have so much going on today. I really needed the distraction. And thanks for letting me uh, vent earlier. It helped. Shall we? Yes. Yes, it's busier than usual and a small crowd has formed in the corner of the main foyer. Yeah, the whole gang is here. I've been waiting to introduce Mortis to the mayor for like the entire time I've known her. Is it the word? Yeah, yes. He is a dog. Kenai, not only is this mayor a dog, but judging from the series of portraits lining the walls, every mayor of Scarlet Hollow has also been a dog. You can tell this dog, uh, yes, it's the same. Yes. We, we know that we shouldn't shake, but, but, we, we are doomed, we are doomed, or, or Mr. Mayor, something terrible is going to happen to this town, we need your help, oh, you should seem a bit crazy, you know, the mayor yawns as you attempt to tell him about the events of the past two days, Oh, strong and smart. It's almost as if he's heard it all before. <gasps> you know why? Because um, because the the dogs in uh, Scarlet Hollow have have their own little union, you know, and they are they are trying to fight the ditchlings as well. It's so cool, you know, that you can uh, you can tell that he knows about it. I'm going, to ha I'm going to have to ask you to back off with all of that supernatural nonsense. The mayor already has enough on his plate without you getting him all right up about monsters in the woods. You're lucky if I'm off duty right now. Gretchen squirms in Stella's arms, straining to get uh, at Mayor Jimmy. Look at her. Look at her. Toothless, angry, cutesy. Gretchen squirms in Stella's arms, strain. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, whoa, Gretchen, calm down, old girl. You're gonna pull a muscle. Miss Richmond, I'm gonna have to ask you and your dog to step away from the mayor. I should have known better. These two have never been able to get along. Stella walks off, struggling to hold Gretchen back. Danica is quick to follow. Oh, and we're not staying to, to argue with the security guy? Okay. Uh, yeah, hi! Yeah, Mystico, we know that, but street smart, whoever he is, you can feel his desperation to make a good first impression. A self-sustained and self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, sounds like what Gretchen and the mayor may have some unresolved issues, wouldn't you say? Hey, Pastor Daniel, I take it you're Mortis. Everyone's been buzzing about you. Uh, sorry about your aunt, I'm sure she's in a better place now. Now here is our chance to be mean. Uh, let's not kid ourselves, we both no problems in hell. Oh, I'm sure she wasn't that bad. Most people are good deep down inside. It's best not to, it's best not to speak ill of the dead. Uh, do you know anything about ghosts? Uh, yes, we, we know what it is. Uh, I think we need an exorcism. If you remember, we did the same thing in the previous uh, playthrough, but, uh, but I forgot that we had Tabby with us, so we never got the chance to call the pastor. So now we are going to call him. Uh, while inside um, Oscar's house. You should come go something with us tonight uh, then and prove it's not a hound thing. And he gives us his number, uh, his card. Call me if you need me. I will. Uh, <laughs> Back of Richard, I mean, by what you're selling. No, no, no. Just remain silent. Moderately mean. You have nothing more to say to this man. That's true, we get the card. You're so creepy, dude. What's that smile? Don't worry, I'm not trying to sell you anything. Just thought uh, I would extend the offer in case you needed some someone to talk to. The church's doors are open if you ever change your mind. Have a blessed day, Mortis. Hi. Yes. Hi. Oh my god. Poor Rose, I can't even imagine how scary this has been for her. She seems in high spirit right now, but they've got her on some pretty strong pain medication, so I'm not sure how she's going to feel when that wears off. And it was the whole food? Yeah, it's bad. But that's not that's not true though. It wasn't the whole food. Like, okay, like the whole food would be if they chopped up like here, up here. But Rosa has his leg like like two thirds of his leg still intact, so that's not the whole food. Uh, but she's alive. Uh, we will both be able to move on from this. We just have to get through the tough part first. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, we are here for you. I should have done more, but no, no, no. These are all, these are all good guy options. Now, uh, a suit? They had to amputate. There was nothing left to save, they said. But it's not true. Sorry, I, I can't think about it right now. Oscar, I'm sorry to cut our conversation short, but I'd better get going. I was only supposed to come back to pick up a few things, but then the hospital called and said there'd been some big bus accident on the highway and they need the bed, so I have to come pick her up. You think the big bus accident has to do anything with uh, the beanie guy from the bus? Even though our house is still haunted and the only place she can lie down until then is the dirty back room that drove her away in the first place and Mayor Jimmy Day is happening... Uh, sorry, sorry. I'm just a little overwhelmed. It's okay, Oscar. We are here to help. Yeah, we're gonna get that ghost. We could always go ahead and do a ghost bust or whatever we are calling it while you are out. And she, she, <laughs> and she would be able to go right back to her old room as soon as she got back. That's probably a good idea, right? If only, but it doesn't come out during the day. So any busting attempts are going to have to wait until nightfall. I'm still not even sure we can get rid of it at all. I think I would have to see for myself that it was gone. Uh, it managed to trick me a couple of times and I can't handle any more surprises right now. I've got every ghost hunting device known to man. You're in good hands, Oscar. Uh, we are not gonna uh, tell about the pastor. We will fix this. No. Power friendship? No. I still don't think ghosts are real. Or I don't think to get the cold feet. No, I still don't think ghosts are real. Really? After last night? Even after you told us what you saw in that pit? Even I'm starting to come around on the idea and I'm supposed to be the skeptical one. You will change your mind uh, soon enough, trust me. This ghost does not mess around. I'm heading out. It should be dark by the time we get back, so I suppose I will see you all then. Bye! Oscar hurries off, car keys jingling as he jogs out the door. Let's head up to Reese's! Yes! Maybe we can get him to come ghost hunting with us! Oh no, you're not gonna try to get Dr. Kelly to let him leave the house, are you? She will kick us out for even asking! I wonder if he even knows what happened last night. I don't know how disconnected he is from the news around town. Jeez, should we tell him? Gosh, I don't know. Maybe we just play it by ear. Anyways, shall we? Time to go. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I don't care that we met the pastor. We are not going to invite Tabby. Uh, we are going to try to have the least amount of uh, person with us uh, on the ghost hunt, even though we won't be able to go with, uh, with the least least amount, like, you know, uh, because the kids weren't trapped in the mine, so Alex is going to be there, and uh, the other guy, Zane, is going to be there as well. For some reason, you have to let Gretchen die in order to, to make Zane not come to the ghost hunt, so I, I don't even understand the connection, but yeah. Uh, we're a little early, what if Dr. Kelly yells at us? Yeah, yeah, it's the same. Yes, hi. Christian starts yelping at restraining against Alice's grip as she tries to get between them. Look at her, she don't like him. Are they here already? I knew you would show up early, Stella. And you brought the dog, great. Yeah, I thought she might cheer us up. I don't know what's gotten into her all of a sudden. The dog stays outside. It's okay, Stella. We can let her chill in my van for a bit. I will run the AC and leave her some treats. You know, I always have some of those easy chew dog jerky stashed away. But we go everywhere together. Do you want to come in or not? Kanika nervously takes Stella away towards her van. Well, what about you, Mortis? Are you coming in? Oh, sure. Uh, I trust dogs. Why doesn't Gretchen like you, Reese? No clue, she always made a fuss around me. Riz doesn't do well with dogs. Now come on in, let's get this over with. Yes, this part is the same. Yeah, 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 we want to go down to his room. Yes, and here we are. Yes, your mom is so scary. Yeah. Oh, street smart. Uh, oh, sorry. Do you need us to sneak you out of here? This place feels like a prison. 
Unfortunately, the prison we are dealing with here is my body, not my room. Are you sure there is nothing we can do? Your company is plenty. It's so nice to have living people down here for a change. Why? You have dead people down here? What do you mean, living people? Where are you hiding the corpses, dude? You know we would visit more often if your mom left us. Did she tell you she turned us away yesterday? She said we couldn't even talk to you. It's a little controlling. You came by yesterday? She didn't tell me, but I was probably asleep, that's all. She didn't want to wake me up. I don't think that's her being controlling or anything. Not to cast any doubt on that, but she did say I couldn't bring you any food. She knows uh, that's how I show my friends how much I appreciate them. And she knows I can work around all kinds of alleges and intolerances. Not gonna lie, it felt weird. I don't know, my body is pretty particular when it comes to food. She just prefers to have full control over what I, what I eat, so... Okay, maybe that does sound controlling. That does, yes, it does. But it's for a good reason. If I eat the wrong thing, it could really mess me up. So she has to regulate my food. Uh, yes. Uh, oh yeah, what are you sick with? Sorry, Riz, Mortis is pretty direct. We don't have to talk about your illness. It's okay. I've come to terms with the way the rest of my life is going to be. Uh, sir, you're so... Again, this word macabre. Riz, you make it sound like you've been sentenced to death. You haven't, right? Not exactly, no one really knows. Yeah, it's the same, but what it's not, uh, what not will be the same is, is, so what are, uh, what's your diagnosis? We have to be persistent with this one. So what's your diagnosis? She's a uh, really persistent. <laughs> thank you, thank you, I am, yes. I'm afraid the answer isn't very illuminating because it's not any other particular, any one particular thing. It's just a whole mess of nasty little things that add up to one big diagnosis of bad genes. Yeah, I know this, this diagnosis. I, I have the same. Thank you. <laughs> Guess I put the losing card in the DNA lottery. And, oh, looky, 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 it's gonna be so funny. And hey, it isn't all bad. Some of it's just weird like this. Look at him. Look at him go. What is this? <laughs> oh, wrist pulls on the skin of his arm. It stretches unnaturally. Hyper elasticity, kind of cool, right? Yeah, you're a superhero, my guy. Wow, does that not hurt? Nope, it feels fine. Like I said, it gets itchy under the skin sometimes, but I don't know if that's the elasticity, the medicine, or some other part of my condition. Uh, your art, definitely, we are going to talk about your art. Uh, we know the mystical part, but we are gonna go with sweet smart. Slap these bad boys in a mug, you could make a buck or two. That's what I've been telling him. If you posted this online somewhere, you could get big, man. I think I will keep them to myself until I die. You know how it, how it is with dead artists. Their art sells for way more. I hope the dog or whoever winds up inheriting my work makes millions of them. I would be able to rest easy knowing somebody has retroactively given my life value. Or you could sell them while alive and enjoy the fruits of your labor while you still exist? That sounds complicated. I would rather just spend my time painting, leave the hard work to someone else. I can relate to that, honestly. Uh, that's quite the movie collection you've got. Got any racks? Uh, this part is the same, but our answer will be different. Oh, what do you mean? I, I don't like uh, horror movies. I love horror movies. We could always dish. This movie sounds good. Oh, Mortis, you're so funny. I am. Thank you. Uh, you free go way back. Uh, no. Want to go ghost hunting? No. If you need someone to pose for your paintings this week, you know. You know. That's so kind of you to offer. If you are okay with hanging out at Weird House, I would love for you to come by and sit for me. Yes. 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 Sorry, Kanika, but you know, you know, you know, Reese is our final goal. There is the, Reese is the only, only person for, person for us in this game. 
thank you, Pepe. I will. In this round, you, uh, you're gonna get the chance to, to paint me. It's been a long time since I was able to do anyone but myself, and I really appreciate the company. But thank you, I really appreciate your company as well. Oh, I'm so happy we could get that. Um, it's not. Uh, it, I don't even know why we got that this time because I wasn't particularly flirting with him. But uh, if you're not picking the right uh, explore options in the right order, then uh, then he is just gonna say, "Oh no, don't bother." <laughs> like he's not interested at all. Uh, no. Uh, dinner's got to be ready. No, no, no. Just remain silent. Remain silent. Uh, Reason of shouts from the kitchen. Dinner's on the table. Guess that's it for catching up. Uh, yes, wash it with soap. What the charms. I already washed them. I don't care. Wash them again. Yeah, the door. We want, we want the door. And now, because we have mystical, we could... Uh, skip it again, you know, we could snap out of it, but we won't. We want to touch that door. Before you know it, the doorknob is turning in your hand, your heart full of uh, both deep dread and compulsive need to know what might be on the other side. What do you think you're doing? Well... A... <laughs> Just cleaning this doorknob! <laughs> Dr. Kelly narrows her eyes with suspicion. Worry less about cleaning my doorknobs and more about cleaning your hands. Come on, everyone is waiting on you. Return to the door. You won't let her interrupt you. You need to know what's behind the door. Oh no, you don't. Come on, wash your hands and sit down. She grabs you by the shoulder, yanking you away. You do as she says, cleaning up under her watchful eyes and allowing yourself to be ushered back to the table and away from the door. Uh, yes, this is also the same. Street smart, given her protectiveness towards Reese, you find it odd that he is seated between the two of you rather than the other, other way around. So I think Reese should be in front of me and Dr. Kelly next to me. It's almost as though she's guarded, not only towards you and Stella and Kanika, but towards her son as well. Uh-huh. Pills. Yeah. It's still the same. Yeah, oh, why didn't uh, she told Reese that we were here? And he would just rather know these things. Noted. Noted, but she won't do anything about it. Her son will remain in the dark. Yeah. You know, I saw a video online about a family like yours. No, no, we are not going to say that just yet. We want to talk about Reese. There's no one in this town with two parents. <laughs> Dr. Kelly's glare intensifies. Small towns are full of drama. People meet when they are young and reckless, and it doesn't always work out long term. Plus, these hills are dangerous, and the job's even more so. Things happen. Not everyone gets some fairy tale ending. You can find happy endings anywhere, though. It doesn't have to be perfect, but people can still be happy, even if bad things have happened to them. I guess living in denial is a kind of happiness, sure. <laughs> what exactly does he have? He has a combination of genetic disease that give him a fragile immune system, among other things. It's too much to get into, a lot of technical terms that I would have to explain, it's not good in our talk and I, it can be pleasant for him to have to hear it again, so let's drop it. I'm fine talking about it, I would rather we talk about something else. Okay, I, Dr. Kelly's eyes briefly nervously glance towards her son, you see, before flitting back to a position of annoyance. You can't help but feel like what you saw went beyond compassionate worry to be genuine fear. Uh, why are you so hell-bent on keeping your son from seeing his friend? She's going to hate me so much. I'm his doctor and his mother. I know what he needs better than anyone. And I don't appreciate some stranger who met him less than half an hour ago trying to tell me how to take care of him. 
Well, let me tell you something. Not, not even 24 hours from now on, I'm gonna be his girlfriend and you can't do anything to stop it. That's right, that's right. And, uh, and another little thing, you are dead, mother. Just so you know, you are dead. You know, Doc, I feel fine. I mean, as fine as usual, so not perfect or anything. But I don't think seeing my friends has had the kind of effect you thought it would. It'd be really nice, actually. Here, that risk and hang out with friends again. If you're still feeling okay after dinner, maybe you can even come go starting with us, Stella, no. Oh, jeez, Kanika, what was that for? Don't push it, Stella. Just say that next time instead of kicking me. Your boots are heavy. Sorry, Dr. Kelly, we are totally respectful of Reed's boundaries, even though they might seem a little arbitrary and strict. They are not arbitrary. These rules are in place for a good reason. Tell me how great you feel in an hour when the exhaustion catches up to you, Reese. You will be knocked out all evening and regretting every minute of this, let me assure you. How nice of you! As if I would regret being able to see other people for the first time in months. I don't care what happens, it was worth it. Aside from Reese's mom staring down the table, nobody is making eye contact with anyone else. Okay, now... Now, we have to make a little bit smaller talk. So, so she's not going to kick us out, but at the meantime, uh, tea break. Uh, which, is, uh, which is actually a beer break because I have a grapefruit beer right now. Hey. What were sounds to make like kids? She likes this one. So, yeah, tea knife. There is suddenly a wistful look in her eyes, see? Like she's glimpsing back to some brighter time in her life. Kanika softens to her shoulders, lowering from their defensive place by her ear. And they always had those little projects. Oh, yeah, yeah, this part was the same. The glimmer of joy at the corner of her eye fades. Her glower returns in its place. Yeah, noisy and messy, and the dead squirrel part, we know that. Uh, what else? How well do you know Tabby? Yes. Thanks for putting this together. I don't know if she likes it or not. I don't usually have to cook for so many people, I'm just glad there is enough for everyone. Oh yeah, she likes it, yeah, yeah. It reminded me of what it used to be like when these two uh, would come over, hungry teenagers eating me out of uh, house and home. I should have charged your parents for all the food you kids were, went through. Honestly, it uh, was like I was running a restaurant, not a doctor's office. Okay, she liked it, we see. See, she's happy right now. So now we can ask, why didn't you want me poking around the clinic? You seem awfully guarded about me checking out the door. Because it's closed. Doctors don't usually just let people wander around their clinics. Of course, Dr. Kali, we would never. I'm sure Mortis is just joking. Right, Mortis? You know, I can't say I never... Uh, I can't say I ever had drawn to the place before, but the secrecy is starting to make it feel awfully compelling. Stella, don't you think of getting any ideas from Mortis? No one is playing hide and seek in my private offices. Not today, not ever. But tomorrow, tomorrow we are gonna play hide and seek for reals. Mortis, she doesn't need any more bad influences. All right, all right, I get it. Yeah, but what if it's haunted? This place was built out of an old uh, civil war hospital, right? It was a TB clinic, TB clinic too. Double haunted. I can't believe I never went ghost hunting here. Are you sure you don't want us to check it out? We will have the whole bunch of extra extra experience after tonight. It's not haunted, now drop it. Uh, yeah, you can feel the tension at the table starts to rise. And then, I think it's time to drop the bomb. You know, I think I saw a video online about a family like yours. Turns out the mom was poisoning her kid for 18 years. BAM! 
<laughs> oh, the faces. Look at all the faces here. I love it. Oh. The dinner table goes quiet. Oh, yeah. I think I saw that one too. Why? Stop. Thank you, Stella. Thank you. Is that so? The silence returns seconds have drawn out like minutes. The more you talk, the less you feel like you're having a conversation and the more you feel like you're treading on eggshell. Oh no, it wasn't the final bone. Well, then we have to push it more. Uh, you must be very proud. No, no, no. Don't you find your son as concerned? No, 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 no. We don't want to hurt the, the R. Have you ever seen a dead body? No, thank you. The danger. Uh, you're a doctor. Where were you last night when Rosa got her? I'm a doctor, not, a, not an EMT. But once she's back in town, I expect uh, we'll be seeing a lot of each other. She won't be the first amputee I've treated, so at least I have some experience. The poor kid is gonna be a tough adjustment. I just hope I can be helpful to her. Poor Rosa. I think she will be just fine. Oscar said she seemed in high spirits. Payments will do that. The tension at the dinner table reaches a breaking point. Oh, I wanted to. Oh, I wanted it to 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 be the poison one, but sure, it's fine as well. All right, that's enough. Doctor Kelly is interrupted by Reese before she can finish her thought. So we were talking about maybe watching a movie, and this part is gonna be the same. We are just going to sit in the dark, you know. I'm sick every day. Yes. Yes, and stop mid sentence, missing in pain, and wrapping himself in his arm. Poor baby. Yes, Reese. I knew it. I knew this would be too much. Everyone, get out of my house, please. Just leave us alone. Stop trying to interfere with his life. All it does is hurt him more. But we can't just leave him like this. Now is when he needs friends the most. No, now is when he needs me the most. I am his doctor and his mother. I know you care about him. I know that. And he knows it too. But all any of you would do is get in the way. So just leave, please. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't think I don't know something is up here. I don't care what you think. I just want you out so I can take care of my son. Yeah, we'll be back. I hope you feel better soon. Yeah. Do you really think Reese's mom is poisoning him? If she is, I swear to God. She wouldn't. That's just so horrible. Who could do something like that to their own kid and for so long? No, no, there is no way. You are all barking up the wrong tree. It seems far-fetched and it's definitely rare, but I don't think we can rule it out. Mystica? No. Street smart. Did either of you get the impression that Dr. Kelly is afraid of Reese? She never turned her back towards him. Are you sure she wasn't just being overprotective? I'm sure that's all that's going on. And she has every right to be. I mean, the poor guy took two bites of food and got sick immediately. I can't imagine what that's like for both of them to go through. Yeah, but if she was being overprotective, she would have sat between us and him. She had her back to the window. That's interesting. If anyone should be afraid of anyone in that house, Reese should be afraid of his mom. I think you are both reading into, uh, into things too much. Dr. Kelly is a good people. Look, I'm just saying, maybe there is more to their dynamic than just him being sick, but uh, it's not like there is much we can do about it right now. We could probably go back and forth on this for a while. Let's grab Gretchen and get going. The sun is setting and uh, we wouldn't want to miss a second, ghost of, uh, second of ghost action. Stella hurries off down the hill, almost as if to run away from what just happened because she always does that. Uh, you and Kanika follow her down the slowly darkening street. Yes. You can't help but feel like you're about to walk into a slasher movie. You run through a mental list of everyone who is joining you, trying to figure out if you would make it to the end. Who are you kidding? If anyone has final girl energy, it's Stella or Kanika. Before you enter, a pair of figures in the nearby bush catch your eyes. Oh, the ditchlings. And also Wayne. He's already in there, though. Now, you can't help but feel uh, that with every passing day, the ditchlings grow bolder. Enter. Hi, Pixel. Uh, yes, 
is the same. Hey, you are just in time. Rosa uh, situated in the back room. Alexis is gonna keep her company while we hopefully get this all sorted out. I would love for her to be able to sleep in her own bed tonight. How is she doing? She's not quite as chipper as she was when she was on a stronger mat, but uh, she's still doing surprisingly well. Alexis has been by her side non-stop. She's been a really good friend. Because she loves her. Rosa and I are both lucky to have her right now. I'm glad she's back home at least, and we will be able to get her back uh, into her real home in no time. I've come fully loaded, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's the same. Yes, Kina, I've got a bad feeling about this. There were ditchlings in the bushes outside. Uh, who knows who may, uh, how many more are lurking around here? That's concerning. Are we sure it's safe to be around them? If Sibyl is right, we're only going to see more of them as time goes on. We can't let them get in the way of things. Uh, this whole town is one big supernatural death trap. Oh. Uh, not full of goats. Uh, last night was weird. I don't know what we saw. There is nothing unexplainable about a mind collapse. Yes, I think... Um, hmm. We want to get on Kanika's good side, right? So I think... Uh, was weird. I don't know what we saw. Same here. It was so dark and cramped in there. I can't be sure uh, anything I heard or saw wasn't just part of a long drawn out panic attack. Good thing I got audio of the knocking. Real proof that we had a paranormal encounter. Or proof that the rocks were shifting around us, uh, preceding a cave in. One of these things is just slightly more likely than the other. Yo, same. So yeah, I don't know why, but um, you have to let Gretchen uh, die in the first episode in order to Make Zayn a nut to come. Yes. And the kids. Uh, so also because uh, they are not trapped in the mine, we have uh, Alexis here as well. But we don't have Tabby and uh, Avery. So that's, that's all we could do right now. Sorry, Mr. Gutierrez. I tried to stop her, but she was really convincing. Oh, hi, Zayn. What's up? Yo, Rosa, Rosa, what the hell, you're seriously injured? Exactly, you shouldn't just, uh, you should just rest, we will have this taken care of in a few hours. I've done enough resting and it's not like uh, hobbling around in the library is any different than hobbling around our house. I miss being there, I miss feeling home. <laughs> and you don't miss your leg, oh also, yeah, yeah, so Lucky, that's not the whole food. It's like, you see, it's just about one third of her leg. It's not, it's not the whole food. I shouldn't be hobbling around at all. Uh, yes, I've got to learn to walk around eventually. Might as well start while I'm still on pain meds. And our house is uh, one story. It's not like I'm climbing Everest. The doctors did say I should encourage you to practice walking. Okay, you can come along, but if you get tired or if it starts to hurt, you let me know right away. Hang is dead. Now let's get our house back. Okay, this part is gonna be exactly the same. So you are, you all are so brave. I'd be terrified sleeping somewhere that might have a ghost. It's come from Alexis and uh, the conversation up until now was all the same, but we are going to go with a mean answer. We are wasting our time here. Oscar said the ghost is in Rosa's room. Yeah, but we don't have to rush there. I'm sure we can deal with it from out here, right? Stella, I've been meaning to ask, do you actually know how to get rid of a ghost? How exactly are we going to get rid of it if we find one? Well, my ghost hunting kit has symbols from every major religion, assorted holy books, a bunch of salt and some jars for ectopods. And if worse come to worse, we can always use the Ouija board to politely ask it to leave. Politely ask it to leave. That's, that's the first thing I want to try, you know. Aren't the Ouija boards uh, super cursed? Are you sure that wouldn't make it mad or invite a demon into the house or something? 
Now the demon, the demon lives uh, at the clinic, a, a few houses, you know, away from here. I think I'd rather not take that chance. One ghost is enough to deal with. I don't much like the thought of opening a door for something worse. Wow, you've never been this superstitious, Dad. This ghost really has you freaked out. Okay. Yes, and this is also the same. It's just stain, can't recover it. Uh, let's get scientific, yeah. An attempt at, uh, at expression, crying out for help, but we're not going to do that. Hey, <laughs> are you sure you scrapped it out? The stain is red on the carpet, this white. Like I said, it keeps coming back. I lost count of how many times I scrubbed the thing clean. The government owns this house. There is no way I'm leaving a big red stain in their carpet. I made sure it was uh, pristine every morning. It could be a good idea. This could be a sign of structural damage. Yeah, and this the stain. Hearing it up. And Kenai. There is a broken seal around its edges. Whoever carpeted over this uh, hatch didn't want anyone going down there. Uh, wh what if there isn't a ghost after all? What if somebody lives down there? Okay, maybe I don't want to sleep in here. There is a broken seal around its edges. Uh, someone doesn't want us down there. Yeah, but how long ago was it sealed up? Whoever did this has got to be long gone, right? Where is the seal though? Where is the broken seal? I, I don't see it, but I believe you, you know? There is no basement in this house. At least we weren't told about the basement. And look, all the red stuff is coming from underneath. Yeah, it's super haunted, all right. The basement should follow the ghost. Yeah, it's the same. Super rainy. And, uh... Yeah, whatever is it we need to know. Let's just go. Yay! Okay. Hello, is anybody here? There is no reply. And now we can call somebody because Tabby is not here and we are going to call the pastor. Pastor Dania gave you earlier uh, and dial his number. Uh, hey there, that music sure is creepy. It's me and Tulip's uh, Waggy Tales night. Mind if I ask who is calling? I'm afraid I don't know an Eddie. Wait, this isn't Mortis, is it? You hear a nervous gulp on the other end of the line. What a great prank. You really got me good. <laughs> Say hi to Miss Tabby's cousin Tulip. The call disconnects. The pastor is shady for sure. I can't wait to check out the church. Call Stella. The phone rings. Eddie, you can hear something drop violently on the other end and uh, then a dial tone. Kanika. The phone rings. Uh, it's the same. It's the same voice you heard when you called Stella, uttering the same phrase. Once again, hear something drop violently on the other end, and then a dial tone. Called Tabby. I've been looking all over for you. Where did you... What? Why are you saying that? Ah. Uh, sorry, I dished you. I want to come over and go... <laughs> want to come over and do ghost hunting? I'm at Oscar's place. Can you come get me? Yeah, okay, I get it. Pulling a funny little prank on your poor, long-suffering cousin, playing some creepy old-timey radio clip over the phone. Did Kanika put you up to this? Whatever, just come home. I'm sick of chasing after you. Well, yet again, if you are on good terms with uh, with Tabby, she, she is gonna be worried about you. The call disconnects. Uh, call the cops! Yes, we should call the cops! They are 911! Hello, what's your... Hello? Is this some kind of prank? Franklin, come, come, listen to this. Is that some kind of old-time radio show? But it's just repeating the same phrase over and over. It's always saying Eddie. Somebody's trying to creep us out. Now hold on just a minute. Ain't this area code from Budapest? How do you know? How do you know that? How do you know what Budapest area code? Just from the top of your head. How, how do you know that? You live in the middle of nowhere in the tiniest it's a little town. Uh, what, how do you know that? I'll be damned. Listen here, Mortis. We know that's you. You've got some nerve holding him with a juvenile prank like this. Then if it ain't creepy though. Eddie, Eddie, repeating like that. Do we know any Eddies? 
Just hang up, hug big, gotta keep these lines clear for real colors. We will deal with more this later. That's enough. You put your phone away, this clearly isn't getting you anywhere. Uh, you look for them in the library. You have no idea how long you've been out, but uh, by the lighting in the living room, it's much later than your last memories of being away. Everyone else must have gone home and left you here. <laughs> yeah, surely. You turn around, leaving Oscar's house to return to the library. Uh, that's funny. You don't remember there being a second door at the end of this corridor. Keen eye, unless you're mistaken. That's the door to Oscar's house. The door that you just left. You turn back. Yes. You turn back around. It's the same door you just saw. Only now it's in front of you. Again. Turn back around. And there it is again. Turn back around. Clearly you just forgot how to turn 180 degrees. Nothing else would make make any sense. Turn back around again. How many times are you going to do this? There is only one door. There has only ever been the one door. Turn back around. As you turn for the fifth time, you feel a sudden shove behind you as you lurch towards the door. It flings itself open just before you hit it and you find yourself on the other side. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Game, for not letting me turn in for eternity. Uh, something isn't, isn't right. It feels like a late summer afternoon. The air is warm and wet and the scent of flowers drift on the breeze. Now, it's gonna be the same, but uh, in the last round we always went with the mystical options, so we are going to pick uh, different options now, obviously, but it's not going to matter. Nothing matters that you say here, really. Uh, is this what ghost hands are usually like? Uh, wasn't that my great-grandmother's name? Edwardine? Oh my, I wouldn't want to cross father, I shall be away at once. <laughs> Very funny, Stella. Franking the out of town towner. Now quit it. Flash of pain in Stella's eyes tells you that she is keenly aware of everything that's happening right now. She's in agony. Hi! <laughs> I said quit it! <laughs> no, we're not gonna be nice to her. Uh, nah, we are, say nothing. Alright, follow her or go back the way you came, go back. You turn as you do so a single door standing solitary in the middle of the garden appears before you. Enter, walk past or turn back. <laughs> you are just going to turn around every time you see a door, aren't you? Yes, thank you. That's the new purpose of my life. <laughs> It's as if the door follows you as you turn, there is no going back. Walk past the door. This door shouldn't lead anywhere, it's just the door. And the only thing behind it is more of the garden. You decide to walk past it, wherever Stella went, it isn't true there. When you step forward though, uh, it's as if the room lurches away from you. Or perhaps it's as if you yourself are standing still. Oh, and we can only enter this time. Yes, uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, how many more times am I going to get jump scared? <gasps> oh, turn! <laughs> we can't turn around, turn around and leave! You're the master of your own universe and you won't let this ghost tell you what to do. You approach the nearest door. Oh. <laughs> look behind you. You look behind you and see an open door on what must be the opposite wall. You turn back. Oh my god, this is so great. What is happening here? <laughs> okay, ghost, sure, I see how it is. It's fine. This is fun. Oh, walk through the door. We're not walking through doors. This is fun. You close the door and turn back around. Yeah, it's the same. The collapse, Junior leaving, Charlie returning, it's all starting to come together. They are the same person. Yes. Uh, what are you trying to tell me? Just say it. I hate it here. The one from. Uh, you're talking about the collapse, aren't you? The one from 100 years ago. Keep listening. Don't listen to him, Charlie. Yeah, it's the same. 
Rosie, I have to be in agony right now. I'm going to figure out a way to help you now. This sucks. I can't imagine what it must be like to be driven out of your home like this. How many, how many rooms? How many, how many, how many more rooms are there? Mr. Ghost. Arrest the shadow. Am I supposed to be you? Oh, of course, he's not responding, obviously. The mother and the mob are uh, whisked away. Yes. And then there is Wayne. Before you have the chance to think, another door creaks open on what the, you thought was the ceiling. Hi. This is quite a maze, isn't it? And absolutely crawling with these miserable little parasites. Ha! Ah. Bottom feeders. Yes. Talk, obviously. Uh, nope. <laughs> Not you again. <gasps> hey, man, what's up? Hi, ah, you're no longer threatened by me. Good. Maybe now we can be friends. <laughs> yes, I want to be your friend. As he approaches, the smell hits you, sweating, suffocated flesh, uh, with a tinge of the saccharine and the stomach churning scent of decay. Shall we find the end of this little maze? Uh, yes, walk forward into the void. We are not going to run from him. There is no need for you to run away from Vayne. You step past him and walk into the void. You're outside and it's night, first moon looming massive in the painted sky. Wayne is gone. The night feels thick and warm. The insects lively, their cause unnaturally thinning. No, oh, yeah, it's the same. Why am I, why am I reading this? It's the same. Uh, Kanika, you better not be dead. You're my right. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, I mean, sure. Oh, she's going to remember this doll. Uh, are you mad because Edwardian and Charlie's romance didn't work out? Well, not exactly, but at the, Sorry, at the same time, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Who is Enoch? Is he one of the older Scarlet's? Yes. Yes. Something about this woman doesn't sit right. She must have some sort of ulterior motive. Yeah, sure. Okay. Because she's the witch. Where's Titan? What's about misfortune stepping foot outside the hall? Or is the town cursed? I think it's only our family uh, that's cursed. An item quest for when I got out of here. Yes. It's trying to get rid of me, it will have to try harder. So, uh, why are you following me? Clearly, you need protecting. I'm just looking out for you. <laughs> Thank you, I guess. Um, are you some vein or are you something else? The body that stands before you is some vein. So, some vein actually is dead, and then something what says its body and me what do you think possess Wayne's body who can who can this guy be really you think this is the the entity the thing that uh, that should be locked away in the state because because we're going to, okay okay wait 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 not much not much later uh, in this uh, ghost hunting team, we are going to see what I'm about to say. Uh, you and Tabby, huh? What was it? That was a thing. This body knew her well, so yet again, this is not Wayne, just Wayne's body. What the hell is going on in this town? I'm sure you will be able to piece it together soon enough. I would rather you find out on your own first. That's the only way you can really know who to trust. And then I can finally tell you more. There is so much to discuss when that, that time comes. Honestly, I'm, uh, I'm also uh, waiting for that time. Do you know the way out? What are you? I'm a friend. Thank you. And do you know the way out? I will soon, but in the meantime, you have nothing to fear. I'm watching over you. 
I would really rather you didn't. Thanks, I appreciate that. I'm not worried about myself, I'm worried about my friends. I don't have friends here. I don't need you following me, I can take care of my myself. Please don't! Please, please don't! <laughs> I'm afraid you have no say, especially so long as you find yourself in such dangerous situations. Continue for that. Okay. Yeah, it's the father scene. Uh, so it must be Charles Show. Yes, everybody. Uh, Enoch. Enoch was the one responsible for the collapse. Yes. I'm guessing this request didn't really pan out if the scholars were exposed for the collapse of it and I probably wouldn't be around. No. <laughs> yes. <coughs> oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I skipped the uh, some rain line. What a waste of time. Why force you to see any of this? People always think their own experiences are so important, but what does any of it matter? Talk, sure. So you are still stuck here too, eh? We keep being separated, but I have a feeling it will be over soon. Then the exit won't be hard to find. <gasps> and also, still, who who is this woman? Is this is this Junior's mother? Because them poor thing. And uh, I just realized uh, we won't see the scene that I wanted to show you because we don't have Avery. But I'm, I'm going to explain it. Just uh, I'm going to explain it right now. In fact, okay. So if you remember. Well, you can't remember. You can't remember because uh, Wayne wasn't with us last time. But, but, if if you uh, played it yourself or have seen another video, uh, then you can see that uh, if you have Avery with you, but uh, don't have Tabby, then you have Wayne to escort you. And uh, in the scene with Avery, uh, Avery is the so-called entity and uh, the entity and uh, junior uh, talking about uh, junior and uh, and edwardine having a child and uh, after the dialogue uh, goes down vain says that it's not exactly how that uh, how the discussion went and then we can ask him where does he know that and uh, he doesn't say it directly, but uh, we can imply that he was there personally when that conversation happened. And if he is something that possesses Wayne's body and was present at the discussion between the entity and Charles Shaw Jr., and Jr. is right here, he is the ghost, then Wayne can only be the entity, right? Am, am I right? Stop following me. No. Uh, do you know what he's trying to tell me? Yeah, and it's trivial. Don't worry yourself with it. Are my friends dead? I don't have friends. Uh, I guess I will see you when I see you. It shouldn't be hard to find you again. Yes, yeah, so now uh, I think... Yeah, it's the last scene. So in between... <laughs> Jesus Christ, Gretchen! How, how poor Rachel looks like! So the scene with Avery, uh, you only get that scene if you have Avery, is between the, the previews, the father scene, and this scene. This is the last scene. We've got to be near the end, right? That music is the same song that started playing when Stella first showed up. Just let the scene play out. There is no use trying to communicate. Uh, whether with the resonant or your little friends. I will try to keep it away from my brother so he doesn't... Oh, yes, 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 it's the thing. Uh... Oh, so that's why everyone's been uh, moving so weirdly while they've been possessed, right? He's got a thing with puppets. Uh, please don't engage with it while I try to find another door. Yes, I don't really care. I don't want to go back in time and talk to them. Yes, and this is the end. Good job, guys. Good job. Good job. And sho someone shoves us again. Okay, this uh, is exactly the same. Dude, Bane has gone 
and once again, there is nothing here but you and the howling void. And the ghost. Do you repent? Do you repent for your crimes? Uh, for the first time tonight, yeah, you recognize the names of your companions. Does this mean that the resonant has grown weaker or is this yet another part of its act? She's not here, but my cousin Tabby is the one you want. I haven't stepped foot in this town before a couple of days ago. <gasps> oh, we have to we have to push Tabby under the bus. You must answer for the crimes committed by your scarlet blood. Oh, he don't care. Yeah, until you do, I cannot die. I want to die. Yes, yes. It's the same years of my life. Yes. Uh, explore Mystica, you can't actually make me do anything, can you? I can keep you here, I can do whatever what I want with them. I can refuse, but if I do, then I will, them, the ghost will stay. Yeah, this is bullshit. But the spirit ignores your protestation. How very rude. The sentence has been handed down. Make your choice. Smell hits you, that now familiar wet annual odor. What an annoying pest you are, but you couldn't keep me out for long. It seems we've exhausted its power. Holding, a, holding all these bodies hostage must have been quite taxing. Come along, Mortis. It's desperate, but it has no power over you. There is no need to bow to the will of such afraid and broken consciousness. Leave it to the leave it to fester. Now, we don't have Tabby here to step in, so we either have to um, give up years of our lives or leave the ghost here. If we leave the ghost here, uh, then Oscar and Rosa will have to move to the old Maxwell place. And we also get a few scenes that you can only see if uh, they live there. But if we, if we sacrifice years of our lives, then veins get pretty angry with us. So I think we want to go with that one. I can't just leave the ghost here. You can. Thank you. Uh, what about my friends? What happens to them if I just leave? They already left. They are not a factor in this. Where will Oscar, Oscar and Luza live if the ghost stays? Uh, we know that. But we are going to sacrifice years of our lives. Screw you, wait. No, no, no. Uh, we are just quietly going into the light. Stop. Don't do this. Vane is cut off uh, as you're both face to face with the resonant. Silence. This is the same as well, but I'm gonna let you watch it. For the first time in what feels like hours, the earth around you feels solid, real, but also soft. You feel it pressing in, in, on, in on all sides, cold and growing tighter by the second as the soil settles. Flow your way out. Your arms tear at the earth until they break through into the air. Look back behind you. Here is Junior. As you guess for breath, you take a look into the pit behind you. Poor guy. Charles Mimify remains stare up at you, sad and broken at the bottom of the pit. You're only able to maintain your gaze for a moment before exhaustion overwhelms you. With the last of your strength, you hoist yourself from the pit and collapse on the floor. You feel like death. What a foolish thing to give up so much of yourself. 
and for something so meaningless. Have you no sense of self-preservation? I don't, thank you. There is genuine anger in his voice. It's the first time he's shown any emotion and it chills you because he cares for us. He could be our monster boyfriend, you know, but, 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 but Tim Reese, okay, Tim Reese. You reach for something to say in response, but you're still delirious from what happened and you struggle to form coherent thoughts. Look what it's done to you. There you are, oh, you poor. Sibia pauses mid-sentence as she notices vein from the corner of her eyes. Come with me, dear. Let's get you home. Make sure nothing else happens to her or there will be hell to pay. Okay, so now, based on this sentence, you would think that, that Wayne is somehow superior to Sibyl, like they are working for the same purpose, I think, they have the same goal, but, uh, but Wayne has more power in this than Sibyl does. He practically hisses the words. You quietly walk towards the stairs, Sibyl lends you her arm as she gently guides you out of the library. Uh, it's real, yeah, it's the same. Uh, Kanika came to get me right away. I'm sorry I wasn't there for you earlier in the night. I had no idea what you were all planning to do. How were we supposed to know it would be like that? Things have been strange around town, sweetie. Now is not the time to be poking around in the supernatural. I thought you learned that lesson yesterday. But magic isn't real. I mean, it's not supposed to be. God, that hurt. Everything is so... Lenica stops mid-sentence as she realizes what's happened to you. Oh my god, Mortis, you poor thing. Mortis, did you... Look, I mean, look at them. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just never really thought about, like, look at the difference between Oscar, who is supposedly a young father, and, and, and Sipil. Like, she looks more like a grandma. I don't know, I, I don't know how ages work. Yeah, it's over, I'm so happy I could help. The house is clean. All that matters that Rosa can go back. No, it's better be over because I feel like I just aged at least a decade. Have you seen what happened to my face? Oh my god. No, no, no. It's better be over because I feel like I just aged at least a decade. I'm so, so sorry. I don't know how I can possibly make this up to you. You know, Mortis, the salt and pepper look is good on you. Maybe this isn't all bad. Thank you. Kanika. Sorry, just trying to be positive. Stella is way better at that. Is she okay? I was wondering the same thing. We just saw a ghost and she's just standing off by herself. It would be normal. Uh, it would be a normal reaction from anyone else who had just seen a ghost, but this is Stella we are talking about. <laughs> hey Stella, want to hang out with the rest of the class? What? Oh. Uh, I'm okay, I will see you guys later. She hurries off down the road. But if she's still possessed, no. She might be uh, of a flake. I guess she hit her limit. Should we go after her? I think she just needs some time to herself. Stella's never been the kind to share her burdens and I doubt that uh, we'll change just because somebody goes chasing after her. If anything, it would just make her clam up even more. She's a strong guard. She will be okay. Uh, nobody here should be rushing after anyone right now. That goes doubly for you, Kanika. We don't want the code of yours to get any worse. Uh, you, bet you would better not get any ideas either, Mortis. You need time to recover. Uh, I spent a lot of time with Wayne in there. Yeah, I noticed. We could smell him as soon as we snapped out of him. What happened? Did he hurt you? Uh, he was furious with me for getting rid of the ghost. He crashed the ditchling under his boot. It was pretty scary. No, but he gives me really bad vibes. I don't know. I don't. I, I think he's harmless. Uh, he was furious with me for getting rid of the ghost. Weird. It's like he has some sort of obsession with you, isn't it? He does. He clearly does. There was someone else in there, but it's my house. Rose and I live there. What did he say to you? 
We don't need to trouble Mortis for the details, no one pay any mind to that man. He's just a drifter, he will be gone soon enough. In the meantime, steer clear and he won't make trouble. I can't believe I let Rosa go in there, how could I have been so careless? Yes. Uh, after everything she went through in the last day, how could I have let this happen? We are, we are not going to be nice to you, you know, you can, you can just uh, dwell over this. Should have stopped us from coming. Um, we also don't care how they fat, you know. We are we are not so. We don't care. What if you didn't know how who you were supposed to be? No idea. There was no context, nothing. But there was a weird feeling, like no rolling guilt. I was so angry. I was mostly mostly just scared. I didn't feel any of those things. I felt I don't know how to describe it. I felt powerful because you're a witch. Uh, Yes, what else? There was another carving in there, they keep giving me visions. Uh, I wonder if those things are tied to everything supernatural that's been happening. Yeah, I wonder. One is a coincidence, but two of them on back-to-back -back nights? I'm sorry, I'm a little lost. You've been finding carvings around town and they've been giving you visions? I'm sure everyone here could stand around theorizing about this and that all night long. There will be plenty of time for that tomorrow. Uh, and that's all. Yes, I guess I should probably head back. I should get going too. It's starting to get chilly out and uh, there is still work to do to get Rosa set up for the night. Don't be a stranger and let us know if you need anything, Oscar. I will. Thank you, all of you, again. I believe it's time for me to get my daughter home as well. But... Kanika, dear, you haven't been feeling well. You need to get some rest. Okay. I will see you tomorrow, Mortis. Oh, and also, all the ditchlings uh, are gone. Yeah. I haven't forgotten about what we talked about this morning. Yes. I mean, yes. Cool. Neither have I. The only difference that I'm I'm going to uh, ditch you, you know, when we actually try to leave because, um, you know. Kanika wearily tracks back to the general store. I will walk you home after I finish getting Kanika her tea and we can catch about, chat about what just happened. Yeah, I will be just a moment. You're, you're too tired to say no. Sibyl leaves. You make yourself comfortable for a few minutes while you wait. After everything that's happened tonight, the normalcy of sitting on a quiet and empty road feels like a priceless fresh. <laughs> I hope you don't mind, but I took the liberty to call your cousin and tell her about what happened tonight. She wasn't exactly thrilled to hear from me, but I think I blunted her anger as much as I could. Shall we head out for a walk? Time to go home. Yes. You once again find yourself on the long track back up to the east estate. But also, there are ditchlings here on the way to the estate, so you can't help but focus on how awful your body feels. Maybe the walk will do you good. Maybe you will start getting used to these changes and they won't feel as bad in the morning as they do now. Let's stop here for a bit. I have to imagine you need a moment to rest. Uh, we don't have to stop on my account. I'm totally fine. Ditchlings everywhere. What happened to me? Are, are you a witch? She laughed, surprised by your question. I suppose some people might call me one, but I'm just an old woman who fancies herself a bit of a healer. Sure. Are you lying to me? What you call yourself isn't important. You're more power powerful than you let on. Well, I do drink plenty of tea. I'm so sorry, Mortis. I completely forgot to send you home with some tonight. I don't mind that. Um... Uh, Wade didn't want me to make a deal with that ghost. He was so angry when I did it. Some people will never understand the kind of sacrifice you made tonight. They would never do anything of the sort themselves. Seeing someone else be so selfless is an affront to everything they are. Your head starts swimming and ex as exhaustion starts to overpower you. You are in no state to have this sort of conversation. You poor dear, let's just focus on walking for a little bit and then we can talk some more. You and Sibyl silently walk deeper into the woods. We are getting closer to the estate. This should be a good good enough resting spot. Eh? Hey. What is Wayne? He's just a man. 
who does she think you are? There's no way in hell that Wayne is just a man. Um, I mean, do you think it's a bit too much? No, absolutely not. He's not just a fucking man. Why the hell do you think I would buy that after tonight or um, before? No, there is more to him than that. I think we should go with the mystical though. You know, it's not... Um, hmm. Yeah, the mystical one will do fine. A smile briefly fades from her face. It's not exactly polite to share people's medical history. I may not have taken a Hippocratic oath, but I still respect the privacy of others. That doesn't mean you should trust him though, be careful with that one. But then if they are on this thing together, you know, uh, then why would she say this? I don't really understand the dynamic of them yet. Uh, why can't I just go home like to my real home? I'm afraid this is your real home. It called to you, didn't it? Otherwise, you would never, you never would have gotten on the bus. Nobody really leaves the holler, at least not forever. Call it a quirk of the town. And do you remember that Kanika left and then came back? It makes you wonder, did his father, like how did his father die? Was it an accident? Was it by some tea, maybe? You know... <laughs> no, no, no! <laughs> no! <laughs> oh my, you look absolutely horrified. I was just pulling your leg, dear. People leave town all the time. You just haven't been blessed with the most frequent public transportation. You are a liar. Your vision blurs as you try to form words. Are you alright? We don't have much further to go. Let's get back on the trail. You might see a trek through the rema remainder of the woods and find yourself on the outskirts of the estate. Mortis, why don't you swing by the tea room tomorrow? Say, early afternoon? I would love to chat for a little while. Come by any time. I'll be there all day. Good luck handling Tabitha. I tried to soften her up over the phone, but there is only so much softening you can do with someone that prickly, bless her heart, or so. There were ditchlings on the way here, but here in this state, there are none. N not even one ditchling is over here. And you can't see Wayne poking around either. Get a good night's nice rest, Mortis. You've earned it. Sibia heads back through the woods, leaving you alone to face Tabby. And Tess. You open the door to the estate as quietly as you can, only to find your cousin anxiously pacing in the foyer. She's been waiting for you. So you finally came back. After last night, I thought we were done with all the running around and secrecy. I guess I was too optimistic. And you look like hell warmed over. What the hell did you do to yourself? Uh... I gave up years of my life to an angry ghost, our family wrong. Yes. Yes. As the words leave your mouth, your body shivers with age and exhaustion. The stress of talking to your cousin about tonight's events is on the cusp of overwhelming. Whether you have to whatever you have to say, it's best to say it quick. You did what? I thought Sibyl said something along those lines on the phone, but I thought she was joking. Please tell me the two of you are pulling a prank on me. Did Stella put you up to it? Lie, yeah, it's a prank. This is just old age makeup. We got you really good. No, 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 no. You heard me. Years of my life. It was the only way to satisfy him. It should, it should have been you, Jesus Christ. No. Well, it's no big deal. I just thought you should know. It feels so much worse than I thought it would. Say nothing in response. Oh, it's no big deal. I just thought you should know. No big deal? Yes, big deal. <laughs> Why would you ever give up something so important? Oh, you care about me. Because you want to sacrifice me? You sound just like Wayne right now. No wonder you two dated. <laughs> he didn't want me to do this either. Oh, poor Tabby. Look at the face. He was there tonight too? Great. You can't keep this conversation up much longer. This day has taken too much of a toll on you and you need a rest. Are you okay? You're not looking too good. Ah, 
fine. You're clearly not, but sure, let's both keep lying to ourselves so we can have a teeth over that grief. What is he? He seems like a nice guy. What are you hiding about him? He's stalking me. What is he? A sick man that you should avoid. If I could get him to stop talking to you, I would. He's not the decent man I used to know, you see? I'm not sure she knows, but she knows, right? She has to know that Wayne is not Wayne, right? You can't keep uh, this conversation up. Yeah, 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 you already said this, Mr. Game. Uh, there was another one of those stones in Oscar's house. It gave me another vision. Are you serious? Uh, what if they are what's making all of this supernatural stuff happen? They've been telling me a lot about our family. I think we've done some terrible stuff, Debbie. We haven't done anything. Even if our family has done terrible things, and that's a big if, they were done in different times by different people. Stop guilting yourself over it. The only thing you should be guilting yourself over is how you've been treating me. I'm sorry about that, Tabby, really. Uh, what if they are what's making all of this supernatural stuff happen? Okay, let's say for a second that there is something supernatural happening in town and that these stones are causing it. What are we supposed to do about it? Run around and smash them? Rhetorical question, but also uh, I've got news for you. One of them is buried under 20 tons of rock. Who put them there? You expect me to know? They are probably some kind of ancient artifact and I'm not an archaeologist. So I don't think Tabby knows the whole truth about what's going on, but she definitely knows some of it. I think I should go to the doctor. No, no, leave it at that. You can't keep this. Yes, you already said it. Uh, that's pretty much it. Great, then I'm going to bed. That's it. That's it. You acted up over me not getting home in time and, and, and getting older and all worn. And then you are just, oh yeah, well, okay. I heard everything you wanted to say. Now I'm going to bed. Bye. That's, that's how you handle it? Come on. Your cousin will stop leaving you alone. Well, thanks, Debbie. Bye. You don't even notice yourself entering the guest room and falling into bed. Suddenly, you are just there, buried under your family's musty covers. It's Wednesday night. Nearly half a week has passed since you first arrived in town, and a little over half a week remains until the bus comes to take you home. The spirit of Charles Church Jr. has been put to rest at the expense of unknown years of your life. The specter of the night's events will linger over you for, uh, for every day you have left. A grim reminder of the price you willingly paid for the crimes of a family you never met. Maybe it will be easier in the morning. Maybe your joints will ache just a little less than they do now. Maybe you can still ride the capsized ship of your now broken life. Or maybe things will only get worse from here. They will, I'm sure they will. <laughs> Episode 4 await! Yay! Ooh, well, uh, as you can see, uh, as we are progressing the story, there are less and less things that we can actually skip in the hardcore run because of all the new content, the new information, the new dialogues that we can get, which is a good thing, right? We, we came here to gather new information, so it's good. With that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to let YouTube know about it by liking, subscribing, leaving a comment. But no one likes our trolls, so bye-bye!